Yes, well, I'm not too worried about what our eco-village will contain because I really trust our members to come up in the future as needs be with something that is pretty wonderful. I am pretty interested in the structure and how we make decisions and our governance thing. But I think if we've got that right, then the decisions that the members make will be for our highest good and greatest joy. But in saying that, there's a lot of things that the members are talking about now, uh, which is like sharing meals and sharing a lot of things and also sort of being able to um, uh, have a swimming pool, maybe a tennis court. All these things are into the future. And I trust that the members will make the best decisions given our resources at the time when it comes up. Yeah, the rest of the neighbourhood is very important to our eco-village because we're planning a very open gate eco-village. There's nothing about a, a, a closed um, group of people here. Uh, already we make a lot of contact with our neighbours and we, we consult them in many ways. We do letter drops and we invite them here for morning tea and we invite them for many of the uh, activities that we actually do here too. So yeah, it's very important. The neighbours are very important to us. And the whole district is important. One day I hope we're growing food here for the whole district. So, hmm. Great. Yeah. Well, originally when I had this great dream to sort of do the Eco Village, two of my friends' uh, husbands died, leaving them to bring up sort of two teenage kids each. And I was very much coming through the social door. And the social door uh, for me was how we live together and how we can support each other. Um, so I, I kind of see that, but of course you can't have that without having it healthy and and so the environmental sustainability comes in along with the social sustainability. And then of course the economic sustainability, if we don't have um, trust and the ability to sort of raise funds and um, be able to sort of live, work and play here, then uh, we haven't got, so we're looking at triple bottom line, but definitely for me it was the social aspect, you know, that we can actually live a little bit more gently with each other and help each other and why not? I mean, for me it just seems a place that, um, uh, you know, we will thrive. Okay. okay. So we've had a lot of decisions to, to make, but generally now it's pretty established that we're working with a system called sociocracy. It's a way we do things here. It's actually a full governance methodology. It's, uh, we, we often think of it as just as making decisions and how it helps us make decisions which are fair and transparent and, and attempts to sort of get a lot of voices heard. But it's actually more than that. It's a whole governance system. So the structure and how we completely how we do things here is, is bound up in that sociocracy. Um, it's very important, you know, the, out there uh, in our community we have democracy, which means that, you know, if 52 people want something and 48 people don't want something, then it's passed. And the 48 people never feel that they were listened to or heard or, and they don't feel that they've been even uh, in, invited to sort of ask, uh, you know, what... Um, what this might, what the outcome might be. So sociocracy asks, can you live with something? And there's a, a format to sort of work towards that. I think it's really important. And uh, I just have such trust in its, its functioning. You know, I must say, I don't trust me as a decision maker or you as a decision maker, but I really trust a group working with sociocracy to actually come up with wonderful decisions um, and of course in sociocracy things can be changed you know that's the idea that you have a review process and if it's not working of course you're not going to sort of stick with it so yeah pretty happy with the direction we're heading in that respect oh, living in this eco village i'm really excited about what's coming up and hopefully dave and i will be building our house next year um, I've got great thoughts about it. I, I, I like the idea that we're going to have our own private space and I like the idea that I'll be able to go outside into public space. I like the ease of that. I, like, I'll, I think I'll like the ease of meeting up with people. I like the ease of, of going down to give somebody a hand. You know, for example, I imagine that, you know, when the zucchinis are ready, I can go down for a couple of hours and help out with that harvest. 
or if anybody, you know, when the marmalade's ready to be made, I can give a couple of days helping out somebody that might be working on that. Um, but I'm also very happy to have our private space, that I can go into our private home and, uh, and, and establish sort of boundaries around that so I can renew and get my energy back. But I love the idea that we'll be having joint meals together, that we'll be able to have very easy fun together. And uh, the combination, I just think, is truly something that uh, really excites me. Um, it's really important for this eco-village to be a demonstration eco-village in my opinion because there's not too many different uh, ways of living out there. Uh, you know, we have the nuclear family way, we have the uh, over 55s community, nursing homes and that sort of thing, but there must be many ways. You know, we're so creative. So we're offering this other way possibly of doing life. And I'm excited to show the world what we're doing. It might be that uh, um, we do something like in kindergarten. Do you remember when your children or your grandchildren went to, uh, to preschool, you know, and there was always show and tell. Take this, take this for show and tell. That's what we'll be offering here. It's not going to be a lifestyle for everybody, but it's going to be a jumping off lifestyle for other creative individuals to add something to this, to take the way we live forward and to give people lots of opportunities uh, for choice. There's not a lot of choice out there for the way we live. Um, in my opinion, I think that this choice is offering some sort of, uh, a lot of interest and uh, to be able to show and tell and demonstrate that through perhaps the courses that we run or um, just bringing people in to see the way we're living, our houses, our community dinners and that, I think will be pretty exciting and uh, you know, I want to be part of taking that to the rest of the world too. Okay. Alright, let me, let me try and say something like that. Okay. Um, I'm also very excited about living here because of what we're doing in kind of a leading edge way in the environmental sphere. Um, I'm awfully proud of our uh, electricity, modern electricity system, which is going to sort of help us run our solar panels in the most efficient way. So the smart grid is something that I'm really keen and proud of that we're able to do that. I'm also incredibly proud that we were able to get this grant from the Commonwealth Government. You know, what an endorsement of what we're doing that the Commonwealth Government would offer us, you know, quite, quite a large sum of money to actually establish this smart grid. I'm pretty proud of what we're doing in the area of water too. You know, we want to sort of capture and deal with all our water on site. And it, that'll be terrific to be able to show people how that's done. We're very proud that we have our, a water license through the Wicca, um, the Wicca body and through IPART. All these bodies endorsed what we're doing. And I'm really excited that we'll be able to treat our own drinking water and of course our grey water and our black water. Uh, and again, be able to demonstrate this to other communities that might be able to um, adapt and adopt what we're doing here. All right. Two different from stage one. Mm. Uh, well, um, stage two will be quite different from stage one. In stage one, as you can see behind me here, we had mainly 550 square meter lots. People generally bought their own lot and they will build their own house. But in stage two, we might do things quite differently. We needed to do stage one the way we did it, but stage two, we can actually hope to get a lot more affordability and in particular diversity of housing which we hope will transfer into um, housing affordability. We're very interested in exploring different ways to get an, a smaller environmental footprint but also make it easier on people's wallets and we have different ways of uh, and thoughts about doing that. Um, for example, one area is this area of co-housing where we actually, where so many houses living around about actually share a common house. That way they're actually able to get smaller economic uh, environmental footprint and also be able to not necessarily have their own laundry, not necessarily have their own kids room or spare bedroom or whatever, because the common house will have those such things. So that's one notion that the community are talking about. 
Um, and the community is very creative about the ways they're doing that. I mean, obviously, we, we are working with our local council and are happy to do that. But the council are very uh, thoughtful and mindful of the need for a diversity of housing and also affordable housing. It's very, very important to us. Okay. Um, yeah, another uh, area of the Eco Village that's really important to us is the economic sustainability. And we're doing that in a number of ways. In the biggest way, we're doing it by actually self-funding. So that's pretty exciting to us that this whole uh, project will be funded by the members of the cooperative. Um, that gives us great financial stability and financial security to know that we're able to do that. The second thing is in the area of businesses that might develop on site. For example, the community is very, very keen to have a cafe right now. And I long, you know, to get my juice there every day. I long to get my soup to take home for night. And I love the idea of, you know, perhaps having a plat du jour where I go down every day and there's the plate of the day and, and I eat down there. Um, we also have the great greatest um, availability here to actually rent out some of our rooms for small businesses that might be able to, uh, to operate here eventually. So there's a lot of things working. I've heard people talking about um, the preserves and the jams and the chutneys and growing the food to be able to make these sort of things. And of course, we're very, very keen to get the floodplain one day full of uh, food that we can actually grow for all members that are living here and also for the district. It's a pretty fertile environment down there and I think we can do amazing things in the area of food uh, production too. So the economic sustainability is really important and um, you know it's very exciting that we've got the facilities and the energy here to take that forward in a really interesting way I believe. Good. Um, one of the other very exciting parts of this eco village is to actually to see that uh, the demographic that's actually being attracted here. Um, I, I find it quite amazing that we have a lot of young children, like something about 35 young children up to the age of about 12. Uh, a couple of teenagers and then very few t in their 20s, you know, which you'd expect and you would encourage people to sort of uh, not necessarily be thinking of living here, but then they come in their throes in their 30s and 40s and 50s and 60s, and uh, and then we have a couple of people in their 70s too. Um, you can imagine any of you people who have actually been bring, who actually brought people up in the in the nuclear family, you know, and the stresses and strains of that. If you had grandparents living nearby, well, lucky you. But imagine, you know, just being able to uh, have your families in a community like this. Already, even without houses here, I see the, the parents sharing the responsibilities of just keeping an eye on the children um, in the playground or whatever, while one goes and listens to a talk, or one goes and attends a meeting, or one goes and helps out with a, with a, a working bee. So there's going to be a lot more of that happening. Um, I remember in one particular eco-village, uh, one woman went out and her car didn't start. And so she went back inside and just sort of put something out in a, in a sort of an internet thing. And within something like eight minutes, she had five offers of people's cars. You know, it's the sort of thing that makes everyday living easy, easier. And here, I think we'll be able to do it in spades. Did I miss something? No.